I think I found a new playlist to farm. I didn't know Mr. Echidna did specific episode reviews and analysis of selves too. None of you monkeys let me know. How the hell did you miss out on this? But hey, we're going to start from episode 6, which we're on right now. Let's see what Mr. Echidna has to say about the most recent episode that we watched. This episode was very good, and it is another 10 out of 10 episode. 10 out of 10? That's, that's just glazing. 10 out of 10 episode? I'll give it as high as like fucking like maybe 9. I, 10 out of 10? It was a, was episode 6 truly a perfect episode of an anime? I, I don't think so, right? Like, like, I don't even consider episode 15 season 1 to be a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 is an, it's a standard that can never be reached. That's, that's perfection. As I can go as high as probably like 9.8 or like 9.9. .9. I don't fucking know, but that's, that's insane. As oh, was he just making fun of the comment? I will predict a kidna script for his episode 6 review. This episode was very good, and it is another 10 out of 10 episode, so he's playing into the memes. Got it, got it. It is another 10 out of 10 episode. As you might have heard, this was the first episode so far this season where the animators have been working from home. So a lot of people- I did not even realize that there was any difference in the quality of the episode, past and now. So yes, working from home. I find no difference. People, including myself, were concerned about how that might impact the quality of the episode. Well, after watching, I'm happy to say that I personally didn't find any yeah. major flaws with the animation, and it's pretty much the same as before. I think no matter what happens, ReZero will just always be good, and we were all worried for absolutely no reason. I think we need to just accept that everything about ReZero is Perfect. awesome, and I mean literally everything. Ex it's looking like we're really leaning into ReZero can do no wrong and we're gonna just sarcastically play into the meme of every episode is 10 out of 10. Let's fucking go. Except Frederica's beast form. I mean, Why? that was a complete boner kill. Ever since I first- Is it as bad? Wait. Boner kill because he's not an actual fucking like- No, no. This is furry territory. Absolutely. Right? But in the light novel art, is it that different? Did they butcher it or what? That was a complete boner kill. Ever since I first saw Frederica, I was hoping she would get naked sometime this season. And then finally, and this she episode, she rips off all her clothes only yep. to transform into a fucking tiger. Yep. Let me see the titties. Please? 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 You got him. You got him. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no. He doesn't know. Oh, no. He doesn't know what's about to happen. Now we get into furry territory. Yeah, I mean, we are. On. Think about how great it would have been if her and Elsa had a home animated tit physics Yuri fan service fight scene. It would have been a dream come true, but instead. Yeah, but Reezer has shown me time after time that they don't do shameless fan service. Yes, Elsa's whole outfit is shameless fan service, but they don't just have every girl just tripping in flash panties and have dumbass fucking fan service moments for the sake of fan service, right? Frederica changing into the beast form kind of highlights her whole demi-human transformation scene, which also hints at the possibility of Garfield's transformation, so we should be looking out for that, actually. Instead, that dream was crushed by a big, dumb tiger. Looks like a Pokemon, man. I apologize to all the furries out there, but I prefer my Frederica without hair on her boobs. Me too. Anyway, starting right from the beginning, Subaru informs the boys that he passed the first trial and offers to take the rest of them in Amelia's place. But Amelia doesn't want that. After all, running from your problems and letting someone else deal with them is truly slothful. It is. She needs to face it herself. There's no point if Subaru clears. He's not the one trying to be the monarch. Amelia is. She needs to gain confidence, overcome her past, and gain the rapport of the Arlam villagers who are waiting for her to deliver them to paradise. And in Subaru's case, wanting to do everything for Amelia without ever considering her feelings is truly prideful. Oh. This scene reminds us that Subaru still hasn't completely overcome all of the ideological conflict he's dealt with so far. I don't think he'll ever have to. I, I, I don't think like he's ever going to be at a point where he just completely is cleansed of the sins. I, I don't think that's reasonable. I think that simply being aware of just like catching yourself in the heat of the moment when those sins, you know, bear, creeps on is good enough, right? I don't think we're ever going to get rid of pride and we shouldn't have to. Just because like the sins exist doesn't mean that they're bad. 
The virtues are just as bad too, bro. Like, being patient is a virtue. But obsessively being patient and never doing anything, that's fucking counterproductive. Same thing with sins. Pride? Ego? Yes, it's bad in excess. But without pride and ego, you cannot have ambitions to try to really accomplish your dreams, right? All of these sins and all these virtues, there's good and bad things about it. It's just about how much is it like excessively consuming you. And at that point, it becomes counterproductive. So far, Garfield is also against Subaru taking the trials for some reason and even says that he'll stop Subaru from trying to take them. Even though last run, he was like, yeah, let's fucking help Amelia. Because I think in this run, Garfield didn't really see how much Amelia was suffering, maybe. Interesting detail, but I just want to say this again. Every single VA in this show fits their role perfectly, especially Garfield and Ryuzu. These two sound exactly how I imagined them in the novels, and it's honestly a blessing that everyone in this show has the perfect VA for their character. Okay. By the way, they finally announced the English dub VAs for Season 2, and they're all amazing as well. A lot of people hate on the dub for some reason, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I do prefer the sub, but the English dub for ReZero is a very good one, and I'm definitely watching it when it comes out. Crunchyroll sponsor. Also, of Uh, super. No, we've heard the dub here and there for sure, right? Again, my always take with English dub is that... I think on average, Japanese dub is always going to be better than English dub. Yep, I think that the, the floor, the average competence for Japanese voice actor is going to be always superior to English voice actors. And that's just not an opinion. I think that's a fucking fact. I think most of the times English dub is just straight up reading off the script without any emotion. It's just a fucking shame to the voice actors, right? But there can be good English adaptations. Absolutely. ReZero Subaru's voice actor, I think, is pretty fucking good. Of course, Dio's voice actor is fantastic as well. He's mm -hmm. a perfect fit for Roswell, one of my favorite characters. Yep. Subaru-kun! Oh, that was a very good one, right? This time... Oh, Roswell definitely knows about the regression, man. This time, you say? <laughs> The Roswell Ooh. OST is probably my favorite so far this season. I mean yes, the Mad Clown soundtrack, it's fucking amazing. There's the other soundtrack too that plays. Um, I think it first debuted in episode 1 when Rem is about to face off against the Archbishops. And Rem has the whole uh, speech of like who she is. She's like, I am the head mate. No. Subaru's, you know, caretaker or some shit, I forget. But during that scene, the soundtrack being played was so hype. I mean, every scene with him is incredibly intense, and this amazing OST plays a big role in achieving yes. that. Agreed. By the way, you anime onlys wouldn't have known this, but the journey from Sanctuary to the Roswell Mansion is like eight or nine hours, if I remember correctly. Jesus, that's far. And during the ride, we learn that somewhere deep inside of Rom, there's still a slight bit of memory concerning her past. <laughs> Excuse me? Learn that somewhere. And during the ride, we learn that somewhere deep inside of Rom, there's. Ah, my favorite maid, Romji. Now. We're still gonna make the theory that Romji is indeed the person involved with the princess of Lugunica. Felt Lugunica's disappearance in the past. We're still gonna hound on that theory, absolutely. Ride, we learn that somewhere deep inside of Rom, there's still a slight bit of memory concerning her past. I'm not sure exactly what it means, but I'm just gonna consider it a glimpse of hope that she will one day remember her twin sister. Oh, I thought that this is simply um, because the throwing was Ram. Um, remember, when you get erased name and memory, it's as if the events that happened with those characters existing never happened. It's going to get rewritten. Therefore, Subaru talking about tossing Ram was directly callback to Arc 2 when Ram was thrown to catch Ram, right? Sorry, to be caught by Ram. But Ram doesn't exist here. Therefore, Ram feels something is off to kind of highlight that. Memory concerning her past. I'm not sure exactly what it means, but I'm just going to consider it a glimpse of hope that she will one day remember her twin sister. Subaru arrives at the mansion two days early and immediately assaults a lolly in broad daylight. <laughs> and I think that scenes like this, Petra has no awareness of why Subaru is doing this. Obviously, Subaru is doing this because Petra is dead the last run and going to be this run too. But these kind of impulse acts is definitely going to make Petra think that Subaru is really into her. Now, this run is going to get reset, so it's fine. But, you know, these impulse acts sometimes, I think, just makes people assume otherwise. Holly in broad daylight. We learn that Frederica is Garfield's sister, as if yep. it wasn't already obvious, and then Elsa assaults a lolly in broad daylight. Yep. Rom attacks her with El Fula, the level 2 wind map. I cannot... 
<laughs> Echidna, I, I, Echidna is a very intelligent person, and I refuse to believe that he is intention. He's saying Ram is wrong. I think that this is a meme, right? This is a meme that we're not in on. He is always gonna call Ram wrong. I think that's what the meme is. Magic spell, and by the way, you see this magic wand she's holding? Fun yeah. fact, it was crafted using part of her broken horn. We what? Wait, what? Roswell picked up the horn and crafted this shit? So now the theory about why Roswell was actually at the Oni village ready to get Ram and Rem. Uh, we, hint, we, we theorized that maybe Roswell is a fucking cult member and he just happened to show up right in time to take out the horns because the horns are valuable resources or like a special ingredient. Maybe it's a fucking nice butt plug for Roswell, but it seems like if he's created this wand with the horn, then all those... Uh, assumptions are kind of thrown away, but yeah, the, the wand, we don't really see it in season one. We finally see it now. Using part of her broken horn. We also learned that Frederica can transform into a tiger, enhancing her physical capabilities. Is this a tiger or a lion? So I guess the question is, can her brother Garfield do the same thing? I'm assuming yes. I'm more um, interested in how this crystal played into this transformation because I don't think this is specifically beast man transformation but rather people said like it stores mana in there and frederica's using it to transform this crystal shit is very weird it's all fucking all over the place frederica lied to us in the beginning about how it helps us like get through the barrier and then when we took it off of Sir, uh amelia we got like quote unquote teleported outside i don't think it was teleportation maybe it was we know ne we'll never know because you know we don't really see any direct hints at that we just see him wake up in front of the ruins but we'll see I think Garfield can definitely transform. If Garfield can't transform, that would be very disappointing. ...into a tiger, enhancing her physical capabilities. So I guess the question is, can her brother Garfield do the same thing? Should be able tiger to. Tiger form Frederica goes off to fight Elsa alone, but it looks like Elsa was able to win the fight without even getting a scratch on her. Rem yes! How the fuck does she keep doing this? She's insane, bro! She just dodges everything, she's so powerful, like, she tanked Reinhardt's hit. I refuse to believe that she just naturally gifted like that. This has to be some sort of bullshit divine protection, some sort of blessing. ...was able to win the fight without even getting a scratch on her. Remember, Elsa was also able to survive mm -hmm. a direct attack from the Sword Saint, so I think... There's something else going on here. Divine protection, 100%. I think Subaru needs to stop underestimating her and bring out the big guns. I'm talking Roswell, Garfield, Beatrice, or anyone with a lot of power, because Subaru is definitely going to need it to defeat yep. Elsa. Anyway, Subaru, Rom, and Petra are interrupted in the hallway when yep. a wild mob beast appears. This mob beast is actually called a guilty law, and it's bond. one of the strongest species out there. Yeah, and it got immediately killed by the black serpent's venom, because I think the black serpent and the white whale are on a different tier of ma juice, right? They prefer to hunt in the shadows like an assassin rather than in an open field, and they're actually one of the most intelligent mob beasts as well. Oh. If you remember from the Frozen Bonds OVA, we did Serpent. get to see one of Venom. these briefly, but it was killed by the black snake's poison. Yep. So the question we want to ask is, why is it here? These it's gotta be Melee. Melee was mentioned by Elsa, and we're, hit we're guessing that Melee is the purple haired girl that destroyed a barrier and went missing in Arc 2. Melee has a special connection with the bald shaman dog. The bald shaman dog is able to control other Majus. This Maju is here most likely because it's controlled not by the bald shaman dog, but now we know that the bald shaman dog's ball spot was the horn location, which got snapped off by a user, and that user can then control the shaman dog. However, this Maju's horns are still intact so i'm not sure how my theory honestly works now because these are the horns right like like they, they, they're intact in the mansion so i'm still gonna guess it's melee somehow right it's got to be melee like elsa's melee and that melee girl has to be a purple hair girl but there's some logical inconsistencies with my theory because it hinges on the horn being broken to be able to control something why is it here? These things are supposed to live deep in the forest, so obviously someone had to bring it here for a mm -hmm. reason. Either that, or someone else in the mansion can transform into animals. By the way, these little Bats. bat things are also mob beasts as well, but they're a lot lower level. The Guilty Law is said to be a boss level mob beast. Ooh. Anyway, Rom distracts the Guilty Law and it chases her out the window, buying Subaru enough time to flirt with Petra. But suddenly- yeah, that was a terrible fucking time, bro. The slice of life moment here literally just was the biggest bait. Whenever you have slice of life, a life is about to get sliced. With Petra. 
but suddenly the ceiling collapses and Subaru passes out. Now, this was actually one of my favorite scenes so yes. far this entire season. The this was fucking sick, bro. Just like being visually distorted. We don't know what's going on. We're like kind of there conscious. It's like we got flashbang. Then we get thrown into the fucking mansion, most likely by the guilty law, right? This whole perspective angle getting thrown in was hype. Suddenly the ceiling collapses and Subaru passes out. Now, this was actually one of my favorite scenes so far this entire season. The first person POV with Subaru flying through the window yeah. was really awesome, and I still can't believe they did all cool. of that from home. However, the scene right after this was kind of disappointing to me. Mm. I don't know if they're going to air it again with an uncensored version, but I definitely think they censored this way too much. <laughs> what, you want Petra's arm to get cut off and you want to see it? Like, to the point that it was hard to tell what I was even looking at. If I hadn't read the novels, I might not have even recognized Petra's arm, so they... Huh, why does his screen look like this? For us, it was very clear, right? You really need to tone down the censorship a lot, because if this is the standard- Hold up, let's bring the episode up. Do I just have a better version? Episode 6, right? <coughs> bring it here. Bring it here. The censorship. See the hand, let's see the hand. Let's see the hand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was quite blurred. But I could still make up what was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it, it looks even more blurred here for some reason compared to my version, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. For the rest of the season, it might ruin a bit of the shock value of a couple moments yeah, I've been looking the BD, forward to. Baby. It was still a good scene. I just want them to show a little more. That yeah. How dare they not show us the fruits? of labor after assaulting a lolly. Come on, man. You could have showed us more clearly. That's all. We got some really cool frames at the end, and my love for Memento increases every time it starts playing. I think I'm noticing a the pattern, ending. actually. If they skip the open... I, like, it, I guess... <laughs> playing the ending when everyone fucking died is always so funny to me. Like, Requiem of, uh... Whatever that sh uh, soundtrack is at episode 15 is very soothing. But, like... Imagine, like, like, Theatric D or some shit, like, when they start to play that shit, when Rem was found to be just slaughtered <laughs> in season one. It, it's, again, it's just like Jujutsu Kaisen. When Itadori Yuji has a fucking panic attack, yeah, Requiem of Silence. When Itadori Yuji has a fucking, a, a traumatic break because of the Shibuya incident, and they, they fucking drop, you are my special, and the most hype fucking ending starts playing or opening, like, I don't know. Something about this is fucking hilarious, man. I'm to show a little more, that's all. We got some really cool frames at the end, and my love for Memento increases every time it starts playing. I think I'm noticing a pattern, actually. Yeah. If they skip the opening, they'll uh -huh. play the ending, and if they play the opening, they'll skip the ending. Mm. Anyway, Elsa reunites with Subaru and name drops a new character called Meili. Listen, the lyrics fucking doesn't matter. You monkeys aren't even fucking Japanese. All you hear is the fucking background soundtrack. The instrumentals. And the instrumentals is dummy fucking hype. It's exciting. When something so bad is happening, that contrast between this dire situation and a very exciting song is very funny. And it's implied that they've been working together. Elsa tries to kill Subaru, but he's saved by Beatrice, and the episode ends. Now, that was another epic ReZero cliffhanger, but to achieve this- Like, I don't know why you're out here arguing with me about this. You know I'm fucking right. Why are you fucking playing defense for this song? Did you write the fucking song? Do you have a personal connection to it? What a fucking weird hill to die on right now. Are you literally sitting in here arguing against me that the usage of the song was not fucking funny? That it was supposed to capture the sad and sorrow? What do you, what do you mean? It was hilarious! They had to sacrifice a lot of dialogue, and the pacing might have felt a bit rushed. That's because this episode had to adapt a lot more material than usual. In fact, I think it adapted the most so far this season. So okay. if you didn't like this episode, don't worry. The rest of the season will probably be a lot different. <laughs> I enjoyed the episode, but I, I don't think that people's complaint about ReZero Season 2 is because of this specific episode. No, I think it's simply due to the nature of the fucking arc. The entire season is fucking arc 4, right? Like, we're fucking stuck here forever. And Melee is taking fucking skill issues. Like, compared to Season 1, I totally understand why the average anime watcher would not like Season 2 compared to Season 1. Now, like, for me, I don't give a fuck. Because I'm here just for Roswell and his secrets that I've been just 
very obsessed with since, since season one. And now we're getting more Roswell dialogue than ever before. So I'm very happy about this shit. Even the shit about how like you know, Roswell literally asked um, who killed a white whale actually. And it was Wilhelm. And when he realized that, he was like disgruntled because he didn't want that to happen. Like shit like that gets me more excited. That's like light novel cut content. But you know. That's why I, I, I care more about the dialogue than the actual action happening. To adapt a lot more material than usual. In fact, I think it adapted the most so far this season. So if you didn't like this episode, don't worry. The rest of the season will probably be a lot different. My expectations were set very low due to the animation being done at home. So this episode was actually a pleasant surprise for me. I had no clue that was even happening. I could not even tell the difference. I thought that this episode was fucking lit, to be honest. It was honestly the most action that we've had in a while. Like, this episode was fantastic. That being said, I don't think this episode achieved its maximum potential, but it was still good. Let me make this clear for everyone. ReZero has never had a legitimate bad episode. That, I do not think is glaze. I think that's an objective fact. When we think about bad episode, like, this has... Like, the average ReZero episode, I think, is, like, minimum 7 out of 10, and that's pretty fucking good. I don't think this show has the best animation, far from it, but I think that it delivers a story that is so compelling and the animation to fight scenes again, it's not the best, but it's good enough. This certainly wasn't the best episode, but at worst, it's still at least an 8 out of 10 and that's good enough for me. I think glaze, but I might agree with that. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, I love this shit, bro. It's hype. And, and that's good enough for me. I think we've gotten so used to every episode being perfect that we almost forgot it's possible to have an average one every once in a while. Overall, I really did enjoy this episode. It could have been better, but it also could have been a lot worse. I'm satisfied with what we got, and I think they did a very good job, especially when considering the circumstances. I want to give a shout out to all of the names oh. you currently see on the screen. These patron members? Are these patron members? Yes, I, I don't know. It's a membership or stuff like that. But hey, that's pretty much it. Also, a kid nut. Look at this. A kid nut? Nut? A kid nut. This guy definitely jacks off to a kid nut every day. But hey, who wouldn't? This episode, I didn't even know about the COVID production issues. I found nothing wrong with it. Maybe there were some wonky scenes with Elsa. Definitely, there were some frames where an Elsa didn't look her best, but I don't think it was honestly that big of a problem. It was a fantastic episode, and I just want more of the Roswell lore. But hey, that is the review slash analysis from Mr. Kidnut. I think that we're going to be doing these. We'll be covering these in an episode basis by basis. So please, go check out his channel. Give him a like, sub to his channel if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.